The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Now, the author of The Path of Least Resistance and the Tech Insider, David White. I'll always remember uh, this day as uh, I was only a couple months old uh, before I was taken uh, from uh, the place, or place my mother bored me and uh, transferred to Hawaii, uh, living on Hickam Air Force Base. As a uh, kid, I could look over the fence, and uh, if you look far enough, you could see the uh, uh, memorial overlooking the, or uh, floating over the uh, Arizona Memorial. Uh, and even as a kid, I got uh, my, we're in tanned by my dad, who was a colonel in the Air Force. Uh, and uh, it got to, to pretty tanned because uh, we, my brother and I, had snuck in to where the uh, superstructure of the Arizona had been cut off and put in a, uh, find a chain link fence. And uh, we thought it was awful neat to uh, crawl under the chain link fence and play on it. Uh, we did that for a couple of months before we got caught. But, uh, uh, you know, between that and seeing it and seeing all the people showing up for it regularly, um, I think we lived on that Air Force base for eight years and then off the base for another two or three years. But uh, it, was, uh, it, was a, it was a reminder, uh, especially probably a simpler time, not a lot of people on the island. Uh, the 707 hadn't come really into vogue until about 1968, and that's when we started seeing a lot of tourists show up. Before then, uh, in Hawaii, it was still a remote outpost uh, of the United States. Uh, I wanted to become a state, early 60s, something like that. Uh, but uh, I can remember growing up there. Uh, we had one television station. Uh, everything was uh, yesterday's news because uh, there was no satellites at the time to uh, beam us uh, news, uh, or at least video news. So everything you saw was uh, uh, basically the film from the night before. Uh, put on a, uh, uh, sometimes put on an airplane and shipped over there. Uh, a lot of Japanese animation, uh, Astro Boy, uh, one TV station, two radio stations, and just a handful of people. A fairly remote area. And, uh, and I got to see it well, Pretty much changed in the last uh, two, three years I was there once the 707 showed up. And it wasn't a four-day boat trip over. It was a uh, eight-hour plane ride. Uh, really changed uh, the islands from a, uh, uh, a dream of a lot of people to eventually take uh, three weeks off, uh, take the four-day boat troop or, uh, trip over. Uh, man, it was kind of interesting. Once everybody figured out they had a place to stay, uh, I met uh, all my... Uh, aunts and uncles and nephews and uh, the other people that I was related to because they'd all come over and stay for two weeks. Uh, it was an instant uh, invitation to stay. But uh, I'll always remember being able to uh, see the Arizona Memorial. And, uh, you know, a lot of people came over there, saw a lot of uh, uh, grown men cry. And uh, yeah, I guess it was pretty good upbringing. Also got to, uh, you know, uh, the a lot of the, uh, uh, I'd say the damage uh, was never repaired. Uh, it's going to be able to put your fingers in the bullet holes uh, from uh, the day that the uh, uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked. And some people tell me that they're still there. The you know basic cinder block uh, uh, buildings that were were there and some of them have never been repaired. You still have those bullet holes you can put your finger in and actually touch history. Anyway, what do we have going on today? Uh, today we've got a lot of nothing. Uh, it came out with jobs numbers this morning. Futures were down uh, two or three points. Uh, they popped uh, five points. Uh, they were able to push it up to 1420 on the S&P cash. Uh, pretty much uh, been working our way down since then. Uh, some of that was a push in Apple that has since uh, uh, pretty much uh, evaporated. It's down 14 bucks. We'll talk about uh, it a little bit more in a few minutes. 
Uh, but we, what we also will see uh, is a, uh, a market that uh, just has no volume on the move ups. Uh, another day, you know, Friday's lighter volume is nothing, but uh, uh, we're going to see what we have today. But yesterday, the volume was light. Uh, we're coming in with 100 million shares lighter than we did yesterday. Uh, 1.944 million shares, or billion shares, excuse me, on the consolidated New York Stock Exchange as I speak uh, at, uh, what, uh, 2.11 Eastern Time today. Uh, so uh, one more attempt in very light volume to come up here. Um, there is a couple things you have to wonder about. That is, the longer you stay at these high levels, even with lighter volume, uh, the chance becomes for a false breakout. Uh, but, uh, you know, and they say don't fight the Fed. Uh, Fed's pretty much out of bullets right now. We're fed it, fighting the Treasury. I suspect that a lot of this is the Treasury being very active uh, in buying S&P uh, uh, puts and calls and getting into the futures. Uh, and uh, eh, I think they would like to hold this market up, uh, even though I think it's a foregone conclusion that uh, uh, there is no deal uh, made. And uh, I think it's uh, from some of the comments today that... Uh, uh, you know, that uh, they will basically when it comes down to it, it's going to be uh, two guys in the room. And uh, right now, those two guys will not get in the room. You can believe whatever you want to on either side. Uh, but uh, until those two people agree, uh, it's going to be problematic. And if you go back in history, uh, just a little over a year and a half ago, uh, one person said that uh, every time they agreed to something, 30 minutes later, it had changed. Uh, I don't think that anything uh, in that vein is going to change. Um, my positions are set for a down move in the market, and I don't think that there's much uh, in the way of uh, anything happening out here before Christmas uh, at all. And uh, we could see more of the kind of weakness that we're seeing in Apple over the last few days. It led the market up. Uh, I'm thinking that it's starting uh, to set up and move the market down. Anybody that ride, uh, read my uh, Tech Insider newsletter over the last couple of months, uh, I think we had a pretty good uh, idea of uh, what, out, what was in Apple. Uh, it's not something I play in that newsletter, but uh, uh, we forewarned uh, the major break in it. Uh, at uh, 960, we started putting out charts of the suppliers that go into Apple, how weak uh, that they looked. Uh, we had a fairly decent high at 705 that looked like it was probably uh, an exhaustion move to the top. Uh, and uh, as the weeks went along uh, in the Tech Insider, I've outlined exactly why Apple would probably break. I think uh, if you listen to the last few days to a lot of the talking head shows on financial entertainment, uh, they are now starting to echo that, and that is the uh, profit margin. Uh, they had uh, the best product in the world uh, and pretty much the only one in that space for a number of years. Uh, they were able to command uh, margins uh, that uh, only get rivaled in software and in the heydays of Intel chip making of 65% and 60%. Uh, those are moving down. Um, and I went line for line, and actually uh, we figured out exactly how much uh, product uh, cost. Uh, some people called in here and asked uh, uh, how the, uh, the money that came in uh, to Apple on the back side, on the front side, how much the units cost. Uh, we talked a little bit about that on the show, but uh, what you have is a, a wonderful business in the uh, iPhone uh, that you know you have to sell two, three, uh, sometimes now four of a tablet to make up the money you make in one iPhone. Uh, that will continue to make the margins look lower. Uh, you also have very aggressive people uh, in the uh, smartphone business, uh, and they are, you know, the idea was that eventually Asia was going to take off for Apple and just be monstrous. Um, why they've done good, and there's still good business there, I'm not saying Apple's going out of business. What's happened is uh, that price has been a lot more important than buying the most expensive uh, product on the line, and uh, Samsung has been incredibly successful in going after that China business. Uh, we continue to see that. So uh, uh, what we got? Uh, Apple off about 14 bucks. Uh, looks like it's going to try to make its way down to that 505 level. And uh, being, uh, you know, at one point, 20 percent of the NASDAQ 100, 10 percent of the S&P uh, is continuing to put pressure in these markets. And um, I think we see a lot of effort 
uh, to keep this market up into the end of the year. I'm willing to sit on my hands for a, a, quite a while uh, longer, as long as we see these uh, ridiculously light volumes and uh, the market working fairly incorrectly. Uh, market is always bigger than any country. All you have to do is uh, talk to uh, uh, the uh, people in the United Kingdom uh, and their gold and uh, the uh, Bank of England uh, to find out uh, that even a guy with a couple billion dollars can break them uh, when you're on the wrong side of that trade. I think that, uh, unfortunately, we are on the wrong side of that trade. Uh, the best thing to do is the right thing. Uh, unfortunately, politicians are not going to allow that to happen. And uh, it's going to be uh, rather tough. Uh, other things in the news today, uh, fairly light news, but uh, uh, probably the most interesting thing to me out here. Uh, we talked about it on the show, talked about it on the Tech Insider uh, Hour with Tom uh, uh, probably nine months ago. In fact, it was right after uh, the first of the year this year. And that was uh, IBM's aggressive policy to getting rid of U.S. employees. On Monday, we said that actually... Uh, IBM now has more employees in India uh, at uh, an average employee wage of $17,000 a year uh, compared to the, uh, the amount of people they have in the U.S. Uh, at an average employee of over $100,000 a year. So it uh, continues to be uh, an aggressive move by IBM to get out of the United States. Uh, today, what are they doing? Uh, they are rigging the IRA to push uh, more employees to quit before the end of the year. Uh, and uh, if they get fired uh, before the 15th of December every year now, uh, they have to make it to the last uh, two weeks of the year or uh, none of the money uh, gets vested in their IRA policy. Uh, a lot of people are worried that that's going to transfer into their companies uh, and not just IBM. Uh, but uh, a lot of people worrying about the, the ability to continue to keep high-paying jobs here uh, when, uh, for the most part, uh, even big companies like IBM are willing to find uh, uh, people, uh, and so it takes three people to do the same job that gets done with one over here. Um, to them, it really doesn't matter. They're still saving forty thousand dollars a year on average, or more, uh, and no health benefits. Uh, you know, just all the other uh, brouhaha that goes in. Uh, India doesn't have it, and IBM is more than willing to have those employees overseas. Uh, and uh, I don't know. It is a uh, is the day coming when a lot of these companies will truly be international companies and no longer thought as companies uh, that uh, have their heart and soul in the United States? Um, I don't know. Kind of hard to think about. Uh, other things we have out here, no real movement in crude. I've uh, been watching that, uh, 86 bucks today. Uh, no real uh, big movement in silver, kind of flat. Uh, gold up a couple bucks. I was looking for a little bit more signal added today's uh, move. We'll talk about the job numbers uh, when we come back. Uh, something's rotten in Denmark on those. Uh, we'll highlight it. But anyway, you can always give me a call 877-927-6648. 877-927-6648. I'd appreciate your phone call today. It's going to be kind of a quiet day. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing you take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy you're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective direction shares connect sophisticated traders with a powerful array of etfs from a wide range of asset classes the markets may go up and down and you want tools for both sides of the trade discover how we can help at directionshares.com today an investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Happy Holidays from TFNN. Our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale is back this December at TFNN. Normally, we offer only a 10 to 20% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases, but through December 19th only, when you purchase Tiger Dollars to spend on any of our products, you get a 25% bonus on your purchase, and up to 10% of whatever you spend will be donated to the Salvation Army in your name. You'll receive a personalized thank you letter directly from our local Clearwater Salvation Army Administrator in appreciation of your donation. Tiger Dollars can be used on any of our newsletters or subscriptions, never expire, and are fully transferable. Take advantage of our most rewarding Tiger Dollar sale of the year right now. Visit TFNN.com for all the details and to make your purchase today. Happy Holidays from TFNN. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, uh, we've got a market again that's uh, uh, rather locked out here. Uh, we're flat. Uh, let's see, we've got an update here in just a second. Uh, but uh, it uh, continues to look eh, like we're going to go out flat today at least. And we're up one point. And one, eh, 1450 on the S&P. Uh, just over 2 billion shares. So another very, very light volume day. Uh, could we end up with a doji today? Eh, it's close enough uh, to look like one. Uh, is there a few people that may cover the shorts before the end of the day? Just like we saw into the close yesterday? Eh, it's possible. Uh, no real volume, no conviction, uh, and uh, just a slow melt up, which is not uncommon for this time of year. Uh, we see more and more people pull out. What we don't see uh, is action like this very often uh, in the biggest uh, tech stocks uh, of uh, the uh, NASDAQ. And uh, again, we, you know, the volume is not uh, uh, huge in Apple yet today, uh, as we're looking at it, on it here on uh, Tiger TV, if you're watching or in the den. Uh, but we come back into the gap up. Uh, that gap up did not have all that much volume, so we're probably going to come in in the day with about the same volume uh, from that gap up that where we saw the 505 uh, low on November 16th. We've had a na na natural little bounce out here. Uh, could this be setting up the ABC down? Uh, yes, it could, and that's going to be a huge ABC move out here. Uh, and uh, that takes us to... Uh, 395.27 to the penny, 
Uh, and the question is whether or not we've got anything really standing out at that level. Uh, and, you know, we pretty much have some gaps. I think most likely uh, that gap just above 400 uh, is where this thing may stop. Uh, if that does break the 505 level, uh, you've got some heavy volume in two days, one at the $500 level, uh, 53, almost 54 million shares on the 15th of February this year. Uh, I'm thinking the long-term move on this could take you back to the, uh, is that, yeah, the uh, 25th of January of this year. And that uh, close was 446, 454. So you could get back into there without a lot of problem if we continue to see what some people are calling tax selling. I suspect that almost everybody saw the same thing, uh, at least on the street, even though they weren't talking about it. Of course, no reason to uh, badmouth a stock when you're trying to distribute it. Uh, but for me, what I saw, and hopefully you're watching on Tiger TV, uh, and why I started warning, at least in the Tech Insider, about uh, the major failure uh, is my power law vector indicator. What we saw here is uh, basically a number that was almost twice as big. Uh, my power law vector indicator number basically puts time, price, and volume together to come up with a, a number, a ratio number of just how much uh, power or energy uh, is going into a move in the stock. Uh, no different than if you were watching your power meter uh, really move on the side of your house when your uh, big uh, 4,000 BTU air conditioner was running, uh, and then you compared it to uh, you know the AM radio that you plugged in uh, and listened to. You can see uh, that little wheel spin real fast or spin real slow. And what did we see uh, on this last big move to that 705? Was a very very light energy, although it moved up from uh, about uh, 570 all the way up to 705 with very light energy. Uh, we started seeing a lot of the new products come out with l extremely lower margins. I mean, you were going from plus 60 uh, and replacing some of that with uh, new volume that would come in, or new uh, products that would come in uh, at uh, 500 bucks, but uh, you're only getting uh, uh, about 30 to, well, at the beginning, the first iPad came out with a 39 or 41% margin. I'll have to look back again. Uh, those have now slipped down to 30%. And more aggressive that uh, the Android uh, tablets become uh, from Kindle uh, and Amazon to uh, the Nexus 7, which I think is the best $200 uh, tablet out there by far, even better than Apple's mini iPad. Um, I'm thinking that's some of the best technology out there. When you get to about 500 bucks, the iPad's probably the best product, uh, better than uh, Microsoft's. And at the high end, uh, we're getting ready to see the Microsoft Surface, which I think, uh, for a variety of reasons, is going to be the most important product uh, and be what business actually needs. Um, I'm going to tease my newsletter a little bit today, uh, but the most important thing in cloud computing uh, I kind of bumped into this week. And that's going to be, uh, that's part of my big article out there on the Tech Insider today. Other is an update on 3D uh, printers and uh, the big uh, trade show uh, in uh, Europe last week and you know, maybe what came out of that in 3D printing. You can always get a free trial of that. Go to the front page of TFNN and check it out. Check out my daily newsletter too. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m., and provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com.
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of tfnn.com. As we come back, a uh, pretty uh, uneventful day so far. Uh, we've got uh, you know, a market that's, uh, for the most part, fairly flat out here, uh, maybe up a couple of points. Uh, looking at my positions, actually, there's, uh, they're actually not doing too bad. In fact, uh, I've got one position in the uh, Tech Insider today, uh, and uh, it's up uh, one and three quarters, 1.7%, uh, something like that. So not a bad day, even a flat day out here in the marketplace. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, a market that looks like it's getting ready uh, for hibernation, and we're probably going to see that hibernation start sometime next week. Uh, this is a long expiration cycle. Uh, the Wally Wednesday, or when, uh, when everybody goes neutral, is probably the 12th. I'm suspecting that's probably where we're going to see uh, a uh, kind of a drop in volatility in this market. Uh, probably the day after that. So we probably have the 12th to 13th uh, before the market goes very light on us. Uh, at that time, it's probably a good time to start uh, uh, thinking a lot more about bigger thoughts, uh, less about trading, more about uh, your family, more about maybe uh, how you'd be a better trader in the next year. Uh, you need, you need uh, volatility, you need volume to get in and out of a position. Uh, unfortunately, it becomes uh, harder and harder as each day goes along. Uh, this may be the year that that proves to be untrue. I'm wondering if we're not going to see it all happen in one day, though. 
That is, uh, when everybody figures out that, uh, uh, you know, are ready without much of a change. Uh, we've got three states uh, that will easily be over 50 percent uh, in taxes uh, for those uh, earning uh, any kind of significant money. Uh, when you get less than half, that's my idea of socialism. Uh, if the government gets more than you do, uh, that's uh, pretty good. Now, a lot of people say, uh, well, you deserve to pay more. Well, I've never thought that way. I never have ever gone into a uh, restaurant with somebody and said, uh, let's split the bill, but since you make twice as much as me, you pay twice as much. So I'm going to pay a third, you pay two thirds. Never once done that. I huh. wonder why, if that was his fair share based on what they earned. And no one does. So I always thought that that argument was rather specious. What I did want to get in here was a chart uh, when we were talking a little bit about Apple. I brought it up a couple of times, uh, but I know we always have new listeners out here and viewers. And that is a chart by Tom McClellan. He, uh, his dad actually came up with the uh, McClellan Oscillator and Summation Index uh, some 30, 40 years ago. It's been around a long time. Tom's his son kind of took over the business. Uh, there's probably not a better long-term indicator uh, if you're trading with the direction of the market uh, than uh, the summation index. Uh, I actually took that idea and ran with it. I scanned 5,000 stocks every night, and I look for the bulk of stocks either showing support or resistance levels uh, as a good indicator of when to go long and short uh, in my daily newsletter. Uh, and, uh, but uh, he's come up with a nice chart. Basically what he did was overlay a number of years of RCA data uh, of course, uh, at that point, uh, they had all the patents for uh, radio, and uh, everybody was getting an RCA, Victor Trolla, uh, and uh, uh, radio in their home. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, they got right up there. But uh, from 1925 to 1931, uh, didn't look any different than the way Apple looked, at least on a percentage basis. Uh, and there's always those stocks, but uh, uh, fairly soon you see uh, the fall off. Uh, when you lose your patents, when you lose your uh, uniqueness, other people come along. Uh, you, if you're making that much money, everybody's going to know it, and everybody's going to be gunning for you. Uh, it is rare that you're able to keep that kind of market uh, dominance for that long with that much money out there. A lot of other people see it and say, hey, I'd take half that much money, and they're more than willing to. We see that in uh, a little bit of uh, Google, uh, one of the pioneers of Silicon Valley, uh, is uh, uh, Ellison from uh, Oracle, the CEO of Oracle. Uh, he is a big uh, fan of the art of war. Uh, he, I think, either rewrote it or wrote a lot of tutorials on business and business principles. Uh, one of his big sayings is that it's not so much uh, important that we win as that they lose. Uh, that's uh, kind of a principle from the art of war, Sung Tzu's art of war, which is what? 2000 B.C., something like that, 1000 B.C., uh, a long time ago. But those principles of war have not really changed. A lot of uh, executives have read that uh, the uh, translations of it into business. Uh, but for the most part, they still ring true. Uh, but uh, what we see in Apple and uh, RCA so far has been fairly strong. Uh, but uh, just uh, keep an eye on that when you look at companies that can't be competed against. Uh, we've seen that forever. In fact, uh, I brought up uh, in my Tech Insider newsletter today, uh, a lot of people don't remember that Kyocera basically owned all the patents and uh, uh, dominated the early laser printer market, only to have HP rip it from them. Uh, there's always somebody hunger, hungrier and uh, more uh, in tune with the marketplace. Uh, no matter what your dominance is, uh, your barriers to entry, if you're making enough money, uh, people will find ways, if they can, uh, to supplant you. There's not always an open uh, uh, brick in the wall that you can uh, pull out and start uh, making a bigger hole to get through the barriers that other companies throw up, but uh, uh, a lot of times there is. Uh, a lot of times there is a weakness. Anyway, uh, we were looking at Apple out here. Uh, there are a few other stocks. We had a lot of stocks out here uh, that people had been talking about. Uh, and uh, one of the ones I wanted to bring up, because these people were, were 
asking for a good time to get in. I just didn't, never really liked it, never thought that there was much in it. But I think that we're getting the next move down in one of the weaker stocks uh, in the Apple supply chain. Skywork Solutions uh, giving a fairly good indication. Uh, someone called in, too, on another stock, and I said, I would rather look for heavy volume down with a light volume bounce to get short and when it fills that gap. Uh, Skywork Solutions is one of those stocks, SWKS, uh, and uh, very light volume so far today, but uh, much better probably chance of this thing coming down and testing the uh, low at $19.21 uh, than uh, a lot of other things. So uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on these Apple supply stocks. In fact, probably not a bad day to go through those again to see if there's anything that says... Uh, 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 something else. Uh, da, 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 da. Anyway, we'll go through those in a minute. I did have a question uh, from a private message in the den. You can always call me at 877-927-6648. My uh, question is, uh, you had mentioned graphene as the future material for chips some time ago. Do you think graphene or CBT is an investment? Uh, graphene itself is not. I think I've explained this a few times. Uh, it is going to be what you do with graphene. Probably the first huge product for graphene uh, is going to be Samsung's billion-dollar factory. Uh, the first product that they're going to have come out of that is going to be a replacement for Gorilla Glass. Uh, and the surface and the touch-sensitive surface of the uh, glass for a lot of the new phones uh, is going to be uh, graphene. Uh, it's going to be stronger than diamonds, much stronger uh, and scratch-resistant than Gorilla Glass from uh, Corning right now. Uh, and that plan is up and at least starting to get in production. Uh, they're going to have to work out a lot of the bugs. Uh, the second product that's probably going to come out is from Samsung, and that's going to be flexible displays. Uh, flays, uh, you know, the equivalent of being able to roll up a giant chart and take it with you. So maybe one day you'll be able to uh, roll up your TV and take it with you and Velcro it to the wall and watch it anywhere you want. But uh, graphene is not incredibly tough to make. Uh, they'll be able to use a lot of the uh, vapor deposition. Uh, I've seen a few technologies where they just dilute it in alcohol and let the alcohol evaporate. Uh, there's a bunch of different ways to make it. Uh, graphene in itself is readily abundant. It's what you do with that. Uh, the first product that's made lots of money on it is from IBM. They've made, uh, char uh, they've made basically processors that will operate in the uh, hundreds of uh, gigahertz range compared to processors we see today in the 4 gigahertz range if you've got a PC. Uh, they're in the 100 and 200 gigahertz range already. Uh, those are going to most likely uh, the CIA, the NSA, uh, anybody that does uh, a lot of imaging work uh, because uh, at those frequencies uh, you can start to uh, look through walls, uh, look down through the earth hundreds of feet uh, and, uh, you know, have kind of the equivalent of a tricorder. I uh, put it in a nice satellite or in a, a wonderful little uh, uh, drone and fly over things and look for where they're hiding their nuclear bombs, their sarin gas, all that kind of stuff. But uh, for the moment, that technology is probably uh, five years away from uh, uh, use in the uh, general sector. And right now, the only people buying it are probably the government it's probably being listed under things like uh, uh, $800 toilets and $500 hammers. Uh, you will not find it in the government budget, but uh, pretty good indication and uh, technology previews from IBM already shows that uh, this technology is operational. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would imagine that any day now we're probably going to see some kind of confirmation about <clears throat> how we saw, you know, some of the... Uh, bunkers uh, in Syria where they're putting together uh, the sarin gas. Uh, if anybody's read the news last few days, uh, they were able to say that they're starting to fill the uh, bombs up with sarin gas in Syria. Uh, how do you see through walls? Yeah. Terahertz processors. So uh, we will uh, continue to think about that. Anyway, I wanted to get back to uh, some of these other stocks uh, in the Apple supply chain. So let me get back to those real quick. Uh, scan. Here we go. Where's my Apple's plots? Okay. <clears throat> Skywork Solutions, we're seeing 
pretty good indication this thing uh, is probably starting its next ABC down. Uh, probably a lot more than this thing's going to give up, but I think it's probably going back to 1921 uh, and the bottom of a gap that's been out there before. Uh, the other stocks we want to look at here, uh, Triquent Semiconductors, another big supplier, uh, another ABC setup. Uh, this one's retraced almost 50%, uh, and we're seeing this thing probably start to move back down. A uh, nice gap down around uh, $4.30. Uh, and uh, again, these would be huge ABC downs. This one would be $3.36 for Triquent Semiconductor. So basically, uh, almost a 50% cut off the last major high of September 10th. Uh, Qualcomm, uh, you know... <clears throat> Qualcomm and uh, Arms Holdings win no matter who buys a tablet or a cell phone. So these are going to be probably the stronger of the bunch because it really doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, not a whole lot of strength, especially if you look at the last uh, five, six, eight trading days of Qualcomm out here as it goes back to the previous high. Volumes, you know, eh, what do you've got out here? Eh, you know, you're going to need to get into $65 with about... Uh, uh, I don't know, 15 million shares or close to it. Uh, and that gap where it came down uh, that it's going into is on 22 million shares. So you only have about a buck higher to go before you're going to find absolutely massive resistance in Qualcomm. OT, uh, OVTI is the, cam ca uh, the uh, camera in a lot of these little cell phones uh, and uh, tablets, since most of them are now coming. Uh, with a uh, wonderful little uh, camera in them. One thing I wish that these little tablets would have is a little shutter that you could slide over it. And so uh, your camera wasn't always uh, uh, taking pictures of you. I always feel like someone's watching me. I guess there was a song like that. What was the guy's name? You're always watching. It was like a... Uh, huh? Rockwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, not a great song out there, but... Uh, it was one of those that kind of buried into your head like a worm. Wouldn't get out of it. I think he ended up getting sued and all lost all his money on that song uh, as it was a direct ripoff of another song. Uh, but uh, what we see in here is Omnivision uh, Technologies uh, probably making, it uh, looks like an ABC down here. Uh, most likely uh, at these levels and valuations, you're probably going to see just a test of the previous lows. Uh, the last major low out here was at 1305. Uh, when we see that 1305 level, uh, not a huge volume out there, but again, another big gap uh, where uh, you know wasn't a lot of volume. But it uh, looks like to me you'd probably look at uh, maybe 1250 on the stock uh, where it would come back. So uh, nothing in here really looking all that great right now. Uh, a lot of little dojis in these stocks as they move out sideways. Uh, nothing that would say and scream to me, uh, it's time to buy. You could have possibly bought that 1305 low as it touched the gap. Um, but the, not a great signal there. Not a lot of uh, other stuff out here. And uh, just light volume, uh, volumes as we uh, stumble down. If we get no real big movement in the market, uh, could this thing float out here at 14 bucks to the end of the year? Uh, certainly could, but uh, I don't see a lot of money in these particular stocks. Uh, one of the few that uh, actually uh, is got a little juice to it, not a whole lot, uh, is uh, Micron Technology. Of course, they make the memory that goes in a lot of these laptops, uh, desktops, and uh, tablets. Uh, this one's probably the one of the stronger ones out here uh, in uh, this marketplace, but. Uh, it just looks like a, maybe a test of the top back up at uh, $6.90, $6.98. Not a lot in this Apple supply chain says that we won't see uh, much lower in Apple in the uh, days to come. Anyway, we'll be back to look at a few other stocks before we go. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And as we uh, come back for the close of the short, we've got uh, about four or five minutes left. You can still give me a quick call at 877-927-6648 if you're quick on the phone. Uh, if uh, we had a lot of people calling about uh, stocks and uh, looking for short positions, um, you know, there's a ton of these out here. I'll give you one today, but you can get one in my daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance. And of course, you can uh, buy Tiger Dollars very cheap today. Uh, each uh, Tiger Dollar, we're going to give some money to the uh, uh, local Red Cross. Uh, I guess that's right, isn't it? Not the Red Cross, the, uh, the guys that jingle out there in front. I don't think of it in a second. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to give them a little uh, wet their beak here and uh, clear water, give some uh, money away to some deserving people. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can get these every morning. Uh, normally uh, by uh, 9.15, you get a nice little, uh, uh, little uh, opportunity uh, to uh, go out and uh, see these early in the morning before they go. But I'm going to give you one here. It's auto 
live. L uh, A L V is the symbol on it. Uh, but this is what I'm looking for in shorting a lot of these stocks, and that is uh, a heavy uh, miss in the marketplace. And in case uh, you look at uh, ALV here, came down on monstrous volume on the 23rd of October uh, with 3.2 million shares. Uh, you've never had that kind of volume. You come back up here, you're getting ready to, to uh, fill this market. Probably going to end the day out with a, a nice uh, a little doji out here on light volume. Uh, you know, your risk reward gets awful good here. You've got maybe a buck uh, higher that this thing may go. Uh, and, you know, you could go out and test this uh, low, uh, at least back into that high volume low, uh, which is probably going to be 56, 57. Uh, we do have a phone caller before the end of the day, and that's uh, uh, somebody called List Ave at Boston, Dave. I don't know what he typed here. Who's on the line? Hey, Dave, this is Dave from Boston. How are you oh, doing today? That, that's good. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, I, I, Nokia. A lot of volume coming in this stock. I don't want to chase up here. What's a good pullback on this? The 200? Uh, I don't do uh, moving averages, but uh, if you were looking for uh, getting this, it did break out. It did break out with some decent volume uh, up here at the high, which is 339. Uh, that's exactly where you'd want to come back and look at this thing again, which is, uh, yeah, are you, you know, are you watching entire TV? Yeah. Okay, uh, you'll certainly be able to see this then. Uh, you had a huge volume day, which has brought you out on uh, November 21st. Uh, that's uh, $2.30. Uh, you know, you can get back into that range right there. Uh, it's not going to be bad, but that's where support's going to be. Uh, you've got, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days that tells you it's right around $3.30. Uh, you want that thing to pull back there with light volume. I suspect you're probably going to get that opportunity. Uh, and like you said, it's not a time to be chasing. Uh, I've seen a lot of stocks with false breakouts lately, uh, which would make me fairly nervous. But uh, 330, 339, uh, back in that range is where support's going to be. Uh, I'd be watching it and have my alarm on it right in there. I think you're going to be able to get that, whether or not uh, the market moves up. Uh, you're going to ma make a determination when it gets back there. Uh, right. But uh, right now, 330 is the buy point on Nokia. Yeah, I'll just keep the line of the volume. Come back a lighter volume. I'll jump on it. Thanks a lot, Dave. As, Have a as great long weekend. as it, yeah, as long as the market comes back with lighter volume too, you got to get both of those together. Salvation Army, thank you. For some reason, I was just having a mental blank out there. The Salvation Army. Uh, if you go to the front page of TFNN, you can certainly get any of the. Uh, uh, contributors here at TFNN's newsletter, uh, but you can get it uh, at a lower price by buying those Tiger Dollars and give the Salvation Army uh, wet their beak just a little bit. Uh, we give up to 10% uh, of those. The money comes in uh, from the Tiger Dollars uh, to the Salvation Army here in Clearwater. Uh, you'll get a letter back from them, and of course, almost all the money goes to the needy uh, that uh, the Salvation Army handles. You all have a great, safe day. See you in the second hour of Tom's show.